Hello, you're watching Transbration. I'm your host, Nishan Dion. Thanks for joining us. Today's special guest is Kevin Avian. His to career I as an internationally known legendary performance artist, club personality, black queen, and actor began in Washington, D.C. when he was indoctrinated into the House of Avian. Founded by House Mother Juan Avian. During the 90s in New York City, he was the undisputed queen of nightlife at clubs like Sound Factory, Arena, Twilo, and Roxy. A to the D to He's the collaborated with DJs and producers, including Junior Vasquez, Victor Calderon, Deep Dish, Francois Kevorkian, and two-time Grammy-nominated Tony Moran on his sophomore album, Entity, which spawned two number one dance hits, Alive and Give It Up. His debut album, Box of Chocolates, in 1996, introduced Kevin's hard-hitting sound with the club hit, Country. He's performed alongside Whitney, Cher, Little Kim, Mary J. Blige, Natalie Cole, Cyndi Lauper, Janet, Bette Midler, and he was featured in Madonna's secret music video. Kevin, thank you very much for joining me today. It is your birthday. Happy A birthday. To the B to the I -A -N -C -E. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I never thought that, you know, when you're when you're a queen, you, you don't really worry about age too much, you know what I mean? Until you already get old, you know, the older exactly. you get older, you know. And uh so I am, you know, ARP ready right now. So <laughs> I feel fab, you know, and I feel really great. Thank God. Thank, uh -huh. thank the Lord. I'm, I'm good, you know. I was just going to ask you how are you feeling. So you're feeling, you're feeling good. I feel, I feel fantastic. I feel very blessed. I feel very, I, I'm on another um, cycle of my life where I'm doing something new again and innovative. And I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not looking backwards and doing backward things. Um, mm -hmm. And I try so hard to like make sure that, you know, that I'm just, doing something different, you know what I mean? You can't mm -hmm. keep doing the same old thing or you get old, or you get really, really stagnant, you know? Is it okay if we do go a little backwards? If we go into some of your backstory? Yeah. You're very okay. beautiful, by the way. Pardon me? You're beautiful, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and so, you know, and I've been a fan since um, 1997, ever since country, we'll get, we'll get into all of that. So uh, it's heavily on my, my uh, rotation list. You were raised in Richmond, Virginia in a close-knit family of eight siblings. Yes. At what age did you realize that you were country? Well, my mother told me at birth that um, she gave birth to fire. She told me that um, I was the hottest baby that she had. And there, um, she ate ice the whole time. And when she gave birth to me, she, she just had to get it. It was too hot. It was mm -hmm. very hot me having her. She, she having me. Yeah. Her having you, right. Uh huh. So I guess, you know, you don't tell an eight-year-old child that, you know what I mean? <laughs> you wow. know what I mean? She's like, she's like, you were the hottest baby. You were so hot from the day that I knew that you were coming to the very, you know, to the day I was delivered. And she said it was just hot. The baby was so hot. That crazy. And, I, ate ice all the time. I love eating ice. I eat ice all the time. So. As you developed and got a little mm -hmm. older, how did your mother respond to your cuntiness? <laughs> It really was so much cuntiness because we were like church babies, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I had like, I had the, you know, I had the swish and all that stuff, but it was okay because I was in ballet classes and I was a little, I was way effeminate. And so it was okay. I mean, I was fine. You know, as I had my mom's protection, I was fine. So the kids did, they did, did play with me I and mean, they tease me and all that stuff. I could care less about that stuff, you know? And I had my little crushes, of course, when I was younger and stuff like that. And, but it was kind of like, you know, I developed quite, early in life so I didn't really want to be a kid anymore so I just wanted to be on stage I wanted to be in another city I wanted to be somewhere so I started doing drag actually in fifth grade and um and that's where it all started for me I sang I will survive live and I won the competition in the in the fifth grade you were already performing yes but it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't like, you know, I'm not like Desmond the Amazing and all that girl. It's just that I just thought singing because my voice was so high, you know, and, you know, and I couldn't really sing low. My voice had not changed yet. So <laughs> first I was afraid, I was petrified. And I brought the house down. It was great. I was very dramatic. And, and you you were always in the basement doing what? Listening to, we had a whole wall of records, like like two or 3,000 records on that wall. And my, I have eight brothers and sisters, so they all had their records. So every time the kid, whoever was into those records, uh, inherited their records, you know what I mean? Okay. So, you know, I had everything from, from you know, gospel to opera to everything. And I loved everything. So I had everything, country, everything on this, on this wall. Mm -hmm. So it was incredible. I loved albums. Albums were incredible. What was the first music that you were introduced to that you remember? 
I guess uh, the first obsession I had with music would be freestyle. That was like the, when I was younger, freestyle was hot. That's like, um, you know, silent morning, they say a man's not supposed to cry, all that stuff. And like okay. um, Diamond Girl and Trineer and all that. That was my first obsession. And then uh, the Divas came. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there's the thing, Diane Ross, I was obsessed with. And um, Michael and Prince, I've seen them all in concert too. I've seen them all, I've seen like over 3,000 shows in my life. That's what I did was go to concerts too. So I've seen all these people and they would come to Richmond like it was nothing because that's a chocolate city. So they would come there and do their show, you know what I mean? But then on top of that, I'd see like Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton or or the, the Ted Nugent band or Kiss or, you know, I would go see any band at the Richmond Coliseum. Anything it, that had a show, I would go see it. I read somewhere that you said you have you've been to two or three thousand concerts. Yeah, yeah, and I still go to this day. I oh. love shows. I love concerts. I love shows. I love shows. Mm-hmm. I see mm-hmm. so many shows. I just, when Broadway opened back up, I've seen like half of Broadway already. So I'm just really happy about that. Yeah, and so your mother nurtured your your um, creative talents. She nurtured, but she she protected me. She, you know, when you have eight kids and, you know they all had their own interests and everything like that. You know, she allowed me that, I didn't have to go on the playground and play with the rest of the kids. She knew that would be kind of like rough for me sometimes. Mm-hmm. So she let me stay down in the basement and just just be, you know, and watch me like, you know. I remember one time I was listening to Barbara Streisand and uh, and I was just like lip syncing the song. Coming in and out of your life is or like, um, my heart belongs to me. I used to live for Afro Barbara. She, uh, she said, "Oh, that white woman can sing. She can hear that. She can sing." I said, oh, "She can sing. She can sing." I was like, "Okay, mom." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. And you were still in her clothes too, performing. You were. Yeah, I wasn't really stealing her clothes. I stole my sister's clothes. My mom, my mom's clothes. She made her clothes. So yeah, I had very bad respect for her clothes. Her shoes are the what got me in trouble, girl. My mom, I would wear my mom's shoes. She had everything from Gucci to everything. She had all those shoes, right? Okay. And I was, my feet at one point did fit in them. So the older I got, right. you know, my feet got bigger and I stretched out all her shoes. Well, I thought nothing of it, right? Until <laughs> she had to get ready to go to church. Uh-huh. Eric, come and see, I want to I was like, oh Ooh. Lord, I'm in trouble. What did I do? Wow. My shoes are fitting. <laughs> and she knew it was you. Um, she, of course she did me. I, of course I did not know. <laughs> but, you know. Did you get some of your sense of fashion from your mother? My mother, yeah. She prepared me. I mean, she didn't know she was doing that. I mean, she would send me in to get her pantyhose. She would send me in to get her, pick up the dresses. That she go pick out dresses for her. She, she would always send me in to, like, pick out something. I couldn't pick out of a hat for her, though. See, that's one thing I could not do for my mother was pick out of a hat. <laughs> and, um... She, uh, but I remember going deep. My mom went hat shopping every season, you know? And when she got a hat shopping, she would go and put everything on layaway. And by the time the, that was summertime, by the spring, by the fall, she'd be able to wear those hats she got. And my mom would buy basically every hat in the, in the place. Mm-hmm. And um, so she put things on layaway and stuff like that, pay on it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then she would have these gorgeous hats. And I remember going in there with her and I was really because these couture hats Jack McConnell these are really fierce hats you know mm-hmm. and I'm like this one mom you know this white girls will come out and like model for a mom and I just said mom I said what is how is my mom supposed to relate to this woman this is what I said to her. I, I don't understand where this this person and she's a model I get it you know but right. I'm telling you like my mom can't relate to this woman like oh, she mm-hmm. can't see herself I said, so there was a count, there was a girl that was doing the, the register, a, a little heavy set woman. She was very, very sweet. You know, my and my mom loved the back of her head. She loved the part of like being a hat and putting her back of her head. She would do this, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And don't you know, my mom bought every hat that woman put on her head. Did she? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You know, that stuff like that really matters sometimes. People forget. I mean, this mm-hmm. is like, I don't know, this is the 80s or the 90s or whatever. I the 80s, yeah, late 80s. And I'm just like this going, why is it so weird that people just don't see that 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 customer service thing? You know, this woman who's spending every last bit of her money, you know, and it was a lot of it. And so she just spent it on hats and she's not buying one or two, she's buying like 20, you know. It's crazy. I donated all those hats to um FIT too. Whitney Houston was at a, it, it, she was at an award show and she had on like silver and she had, I think it was that Bob hairstyle. 
anyway, that silver and that that makeup is just I've just just made me think of her for some reason. Yeah, Whitney was Whitney was mine. I've seen her like twenty times in concerts. Yeah, she was mine. Another story about her too, girl. Oof. And we'll get we're, we're going to get into that. And so, <laughs> as, as, as a as a child, you knew you were going to grow up and serve the children. No, I did not know that. I did not know that. That's what I was going to do. Oh, you I didn't. Did, I just did it anyway until I got out of got out of that house. So you know, I would go to concerts, dress up, I'm going to Madonna, and like going downtown to get my um, get my hair dyed blue, and then come home and then you know go to the concert and be the only like black kid in the whole stadium. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, but loved it. You know, had bow in my head and everything. I was just always a freak. You know, I was you know I was that little that little that little one that thought he could, you know, and I was never, t- I was never told, no, I couldn't do it. You know what I mean? I'm, mm-hmm. I just, I just did it. And if it didn't go my way, then I can't, I couldn't cry about it. And, I could and, not cry and about it. Are any of your siblings artists too? Or are they, are they? Yeah, they're, um, they, my sister, my sister that was a singer. She, 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 my, I have two sisters that are, are ministers and um, my brother's an actor. And I have another brother that runs a, um, runs a, um, a, a, a correctional facility, does security over there. Oh. And um, another brother that has a, 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 he's a, he's a landscape architect, runs with my dad. My dad, my dad, they're all, in his family are all landscape architects, but he's a landscape architect, da 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 mm-hmm. So um, he also has a uh, place that he has, like a resort place that he takes care of too. And I have a sister that she's, she's just so, so talented to another sister. So it's just all in the family. Yeah, yeah and we all sing and we, we, yeah, we all, you know, we all compete. We, we love each other so fiercely, it's amazing. That's, that is really good to hear. That is good to hear. We just, we just lost our brother. We just lost our brother with a head down syndrome um, in May. So we're, we're kind of weird, you know, going through that right now, so. So now it's, it's seven of you. It's seven of you. It's seven. It's um, sorry to hear that. Yeah, sorry you. to hear that. And so, some of your early influences were. Oh my God! Wait, oh, you know, from the from from the, from the world. Oh, you mentioned, you mentioned Grace, Grace, Jones, Jones. Grace Jones, Grace Jones, Boy George, um, mm-hmm. David Bowie. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the eighties were very very fierce, girl. So you know, the, the, the craft work. You know, anything that was electronic or just mm-hmm. like crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I didn't really know I was going into music. I, I, I mean, I did take classes. I did play cello and all that stuff. But I couldn't get serious about classes. I couldn't get serious about practicing and all that stuff. Piano classes. All that. I just, I just wanted it. I wanted whatever was going to be brought to me. I didn't. I needed to get out of Richmond, get out of Randolph Steve's house. So that's mm-hmm. what I was waiting for. You know, just to get out of that house. <laughs> that was the goal. If- yeah. Yeah, it was. And you got out of the house and you went to where? Where'd you I, land? I was in D.C., Washington, D.C. I met a gentleman and we fell in love and I went to D.C. Now, I was a hairdresser at the time and um, I was, I got, uh, this is when they were grandfathering people in, so you have to do apprenticeships and you didn't have to go to school. So I was um, in D.C. under an apprenticeship at the Gregory Head Salon in Roswell, Virginia, but I lived in Southeast, uh, right behind the Capitol. And so that was interesting because it was a piece of weed this much that started it off. <laughs> wow. wow girl when i started seeing weed and i could put it in my hair for me to have different like waves and stuff like that so i put like two or three tracks in and then move, you know you move, move weave around and all that stuff and spray it and you uh-huh. have the pompadour and all that stuff girl i used to live for that stuff but then it went from that to a full Naomi Campbell. <laughs> uh-huh. But then when the weed back in the day was like, they didn't treat it before. Remember the, the weed they used to treat and it used to tangle up like that? It was so bad. I was it was like, nappy, uh-huh, uh-huh. Nah, it yeah. really tangled up bad. It was like, oh, it was really bad. DC, they would put grease it and oil. Uh, you know, they don't do that stuff anymore, but. Uh, no, no, no. It's amazing it's- how, you know, the things you learn, you know what I mean? It's, it is, yes, yes. As time goes by, you learn, you learn all the tricks and you just, you become your own yeah. hairstylist, makeup artist. You you create your own illusion. Exactly, exactly. Well, we broke up. Me and the guy broke up, and um, mm-hmm. I found myself um, in D.C. going, hanging out, going to nightclubs, going to like uh, going to um, alternative nights, and the, the the famous track Sunday, which is the all black Sunday, right? I've and been there. Mm-hmm. That, that was just like the beats were everything, girl. Like amazing. So. You know, between the doing the goth thing and being a club kid, and then going to the black experience on Sundays, which over like four or five thousand people, gay, you know, dancing to these beats, it was incredible, incredible. Mm-hmm. So um, I met these met these guys, um, Jean Philippe, uh, 
uh, Didi, uh, Paul, and um, Paul Avian, and uh, Megan, and we started a party called Kindergarten at mm -hmm. the at the vault, where mm -hmm. we would we would um, bring, basically bring kindergarten life to life, like the Sesame Street party, or just um, uh, Old McDonald had a farm party, and just sort of that. This is when now I'm wearing hair at the time, and my name is Grape Soda. <laughs> I got the feeling that you like purple. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So my name is Grape Soda. And uh, I had a little necklace, I had a little knee high things like this. I just wore all white. And um, and that was cute. I would, you know, perform lip things and all that stuff. But I was also like, I experimented with some like, you know, stuff, you know, extracurricular activities and stuff. And that's what really opened up my mind to a lot of things. Back in the days, this is like club kid days, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm, these mm -hmm. kids are like carrying on with, you know, um, yeah, and, uh, and the rave time and, and X, you know, those things, you know what I mean? And it was <laughs> nothing. You're young. You're, you're carrying on. You're having a great time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you want to be there all night and you want to be in this experience with these ravers and everything. Right. So it was like really genius. You know, we got to be traveled with that. We went to different raves at different places. And then I found myself going to New York and being going to Club Kid Night and being Club Kid to the point that they had a Club Kid convention and I ended up winning Club Kid of the World. And Lee Bowery gave me the, gave me the, um, gave me the uh, trophy. And, and when you were in DC, that's when you became a part of the House of Aviance. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I tried to get a girl's name. I tried to, it didn't work. Kevin Alvarez was the door. We came up, we were like, oh, we'll change it later, whatever. And it just stuck. It just stuck. From the beginning, Mother Juan Aviance recalls Kevin stood out. He's a big guy. A to the D to the I A N C E. He doesn't look like a girl. So the whole, the girl thing just was not going to work. Yeah, and you know what? And I did that, and I did drag. I did, and I did the drag where it was just like, you know, I was in these double Ds and I was like very little wigs, all lingerie, like three or four triple wigs on my head. And it was, you know the mud flap girl? Remember that mud flap girl on the, um, that, that silhouette of the mud flap girl? It was like, she, her legs would be out like this, she had their big hair on. Do you know what you're talking about? Is this a person? No, it was like an image. It was an image that was Oh, out. yeah, 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 I know, uh-huh. I was obsessed with her. So that's what I wanted my, my thing was that I love silhouettes, but when the lights came up, ha ha ha, ha you didn't get what you wanted, thought you got. Oh. <laughs> so that was my thing, yeah. Yeah, she wasn't lovely, girl. She wasn't lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you went from, um, you were in Miami and then you made your way to New York. Yeah, well, I was in Miami. I went to Miami first before New York. Mm -hmm. I went to New York. I went to Miami because they had a really thriving um, drag scene there that was incredible. Like girls could work every night. They could like they could do you know acts and stuff like that and perform. And I loved it. So I went down to get like my bones to, to get my chops. You know what I mean? And these girls were great. They took me under their wing, Kitty Meow and Power Infinity and Adora. Um, all these girls. They just like Marvella. Um, Oh wow! They just, I just these girls were my sisters. You know what I mean? And they just, we just loved each other. And they just, we worked every night at the bar. And they just, you know, it was and, and the first was time a... I ever performed for Grace Jones was there. So oh, was that this? And this was in South Beach. Yeah, South Beach. Yeah. South and she Beach. the whole time I did Disco Grace, right? And she uh, the whole time she put a scarf over her face. <laughs> when I performed. Oh no! Yeah. Grace is fierce, so there's nothing she can do well. Oh, it wasn't shade. Oh, it wasn't shade. Oh, it wasn't shade. No, she was great. Grace, you know. Well, yeah, she's great. She didn't want Grace in her face, girl. <laughs> and she just, she just turned 70, 70 something, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. A talent agent put you in Madonna's secret video. You became much more widely known. How did you? you no, know, talent agent did put me in secret. It was a stylist who I had a host who I met at the night before, and he called me and he said, listen, um, you got a book? And I said, yeah. He said, they need for you to go to, I need for you to go to the casting agent and and, and we might have a job for you. Um, they're looking, they, this model can't do this job. They're looking for somebody, look up, someone black and uh, drag queen to do this. Um, they said, okay, okay. So I went to the audition and everything like that. They didn't tell me what it was for. And then, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, that night I got a phone call and we had signed an NDA already. And they said, uh, you, you have the job, please be at the, uh, be in Har Harlem at, you know, seven in the morning. I said, oh, well, who's this video for? I said, mm, did he sign the NDA? He says, yeah, he signed. Yeah, I signed it. Um, he said, well, it's for Madonna. Good night. See you in the morning. Click. Uh, girl, I got it. Wow. I got it. I was like, Madonna? 
I said, what the, what the hell? Well, girl, I was there all day. I got to meet her and everything like that. And they mm-hmm. didn't film until really late at night. And, you know, you don't really know if they're going to keep you in the video. Or they or no, you don't. Know. Box. You can't really talk about anything when it comes out. So when it comes out, it's like, this is what it comes out. And girl, I was working for like $25 a gig to girl up in New York at the bars and everything, doing lip syncs and stuff like that. Three or four lip syncs a night, girl. And it was, <laughs> things were not, things were not cute. It was wow. not going well. It was not going well. The Madonna video comes out, girl. I get booked every night, and that fee went right on up, girl. So Madonna, thank wow. you, girl, for touching my life, honey. Wow. It wasn't until it wasn't until recently that I studied them, and I'm sure I saw that video. But I guess I I, I had, wanted to do it together, right? Because of that wig I had on. I had no idea. I had I, I didn't. I mean, I know there's been queens and stuff in her videos, but I didn't know she had them in her older older videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know. I, di- I didn't know. So I was, some, it was. Have you seen it, was, it? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. 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 It's right there. <laughs> yeah. I've, 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 I saw it. Mm-hmm. That led to more performances with Junior Vasquez. Well, that led, that led more, me working more with Madonna. I just started hosting her parties like, for the next couple of albums. One in, in Brixton and then in London and then and also in um in, in in at Roseland. So she would have me come and host her parties for her. Um, I didn't really get to get to work with her in a sense of like studio, like, like music stage wise. But Madonna mm-hmm. was very 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 t- attentive and she's very sweet, mm-hmm. very nice person, and I, I loved everything about her. She's just like. She's just very involved and she's very artistic and she knows yeah. what she wants. They, she, they had to make me, she, she didn't like the way my breasts look. She made them make a bra right before she left, bro. Make them, they made a bra for me to wear that made my, you know, I look like I had, my, my breasts weren't too big. They were too big. She said, he's a, he's a call girl. A, he's a high society call girl. Not a, the one from the streets. I was like, girl. Not, not a sleazy, not yeah. one of those sleazy girls. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's do that. You, this is a quote. It was ferocious. It was ferocious. It was amazing. I was a performer. I had one of the biggest stages in New York. I had one of the biggest audiences in New York. Every week, it was kind of magical. Girl, that thing. The stage was raked. If you know what that means, it means that it's professional and it's like this. It's like it's slanted, basically. Mm-hmm. And um, so that stage ended up getting me my um, Actors Guild card. So because I worked every week, it was a weekly gig and everything. Like, so like being on Broadway, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, it was incredible because that stage was so huge. And it had all those lights and, and had it, it, it was amazing. And then for me to do as much as I did there, performing-wise, it was incredible. It was like, incredible. And then and me and the light guy and Junior, we were just like magic together. You know what I mean? And they knew where I was and I knew where to pop up. At. I knew what songs to perform. So it was incredible. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Costumes were never the same. So it was, it was just incredible. Everybody's on there, you know, on their, <laughs> and they see all these shows happening. They're just gagging. So, yeah. Where do you get your ideas from for your costumes? Do you? Well, I, um, at, the, at that time, Cesar Glindo was doing my stuff for me. He's a, he's a, uh, he's a Latino designer from Texas who's, who's Latinx, sorry, Latinx. Um, and he, he was, I was his muse for a very long time. And so mm-hmm. he, he was the one that just made the outfits and would hand them off to me. So I never really, never really picked out what I wanted to wear. He would just make stuff and give it to me and I had to work it in the show somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you made it work. Yeah. Be- and it did now. It was something I wanted to wear to go out to the club. That's a different story. Those pieces are like, you know, that's a different story. It's me giving a look, you know what I mean? But yeah. uh-huh. beyond working with Madonna, Janet, and Whitney as a party host, you had three number one Billboard dance club hits, including Dindada, Rhythm Is My Bitch, as well as the underground cult hit, your self explanatory signature song, Country. When did the word Country come onto your radar? Cunty came from me going to the pier and seeing these two little kids playing with a broken mirror and they just kept going, j- jumping and posing. They were gay kids, little gay kids. And, you know, New York, New York, gay, New York kids are way different than any other kids in the world, okay? Yeah. yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, it's a whole other drama, especially the kids that are like brown and black, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if they're gay, mm-hmm. they're at the pier hanging out and then nobody's paying, you know, it's a different story, you know what I mean? It's a little like, it's kind of like their, their playground yeah, at the time. And so I watched these kids play for hours. And they were like, those country, this country. So I just wrote the song, wrote the word down. I didn't thought nothing of it. I just loved the way it sounded. Oh, like, they, 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 they were kids and they were saying country. Yeah, country, yeah. They were saying country. I'm going to be country, girl. I'm gonna, I look country, girl. I look country. 
So then I met, uh, then uh, Steve Travolta, DJ Steve Travolta introduced me to Jarrell Black, who is the master behind Rages, which was the name of the group, featuring at the time, Franklin Fuentes. Um, Franklin, Franklin was doing other projects, so he needed somebody to, to, do, the, to, do, to do the track with. And so we, I, we introduced, I introduced myself to him and we met, we ate chicken and grape soda and blah, 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 blah. And then he played the beat. Fried, fried chicken. Yeah, of course, girl. Mm -hmm. And then, and then um, that's when I heard Cunty and I was like, oh, oh, this song is Cunty, woo, she's wow. like that. And he goes, Cunty, what's Cunty? He, she said, well, that's the name of the track. And he says, let's go record. And so record, I just said, feeling like a like daisy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> feeling like a rose. Be like a lily, be like a rose, be like an orchid. It just kept going on from there and just feeling the moans and da da da. da. And good. Like it was literally that way. It was like one after the other after the other, then I was finished, you know? This is something that just rolled off my head. And, you know, I had no idea a song like that would resonate with so many people and like what it actually means. It's, just, it's amazing. It's amazing. It is one of my favorite songs. And I love house music and mm -hmm. it's, it is one of my favorite songs. And I have, I've been listening to it since 1997. And it sounds good. It's still, I mean, people play it now. And I just, you know, Honey just played it at some, uh, Ladyland and they, they saw the film from it. And it's still, she brought that out. She's like, wow, it still sounds good. Like that yeah. beat is still so yeah. good. Timeless.
writing music before that or no 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 not at all not at all um and then i just started again then i then then doing the rest of the album i did it with gomi and gomi allowed me to just just go off because i mean i had you know when you're a music uh, a music kid and you've never written before and then you have to start writing mm -hmm. you know it was it's interesting because i was you know i did all these really crazy songs on the first album and i actually love every song on that album and um, it was really intense because I, I remember writing like the beat, beat and I'm like nah, 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 and having all my influence of like funk and R and B and and like uh, those big bands where like Slade or Confunction or, or Mass Production or something like that, um, Parliament Funkadelic, you know those 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 things really really they really Rick James oh my God I love Rick James and um, so it's just like those you can see the influence. In my voice when I do those tracks. Did you do the choreography for the music video? No, I did not. Did not do choreography. Which one for Kunti or for the or give me the rhythm of my bitch? Which one? Which one has the the drums? That's that's. No, that, 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 that's me. And the rhythm is my bitch. Yeah, I lived I lived sing Dindada for many years on, on, on different clubs and everything. So I used to lip sync that song all the time. That was one of my ad lip sync songs. So when I went to go, when I asked to do it, they were like. You want to redo then, uh, and so I got to I recorded first time and it wasn't good, and then I worked with a jazz singer to scat, and so that's what I I didn't know I could do and you know and that's what it basically is it's scatting but it's more than it's a rhythmic but it's the way you hit everything then da da you know it's not so much ding da da is then da da you gotta hit it like a like you hit a drum you know you get I didn't think about it. it like that you gotta hit it and you have to do the ricochet of it the the the, the you know how it hits and it comes back at you then da da and so like that so it's more it because that's what the song's about anyway it's about the song's about when he was testing his drum um that's what they recorded him and he had no idea what he did. And he was just, and they just put it to music. He wasn't a performer, yeah. But I got to meet George Kranz. He loved it. He loved my version of it. So. He did? Yes, he was a great guy. I was so nervous. Can we all come together? Can we all come together?
controversy to you? Yeah, uh, yeah. London didn't like cunty too much. They didn't like the word cunt. So uh -huh. it was really kind of like weird for me. But um, I not that I got banned, but I got banned. <laughs> You know, but then then you met some lesbians and they took a they 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 loved it. Yes, yes, there's just the lesbians, the lesbians loved it. The lesbians loved it. They took country in a whole other way though, girl. They mm -hmm. then country to them is a whole nother meaning, girl. Like, like I know nothing about that. I don't know, you know, exactly why they feel it in another way, but it's like you should see the euphoria over their faces, girl. Okay. So country, country is what for country is it is an anointment that um that that you are bestowed with um from the great from the great angels above you um <laughs> that are you know because you're not the first one you know what i mean you you sit on shoulders of fierce faggots girl you know what i mean we all do <laughs> and, um, these faggots didn't really have a lot of like you know the ones that did live or the ones that passed on you know they left us with really nothing to real handbook you know what i mean so no. when you talk about you know uh, marching, you're talking about, you know, sticking up for your rights. You're talking about the, you know, we didn't get here through some, some app girl. Okay. We, 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 there's a people that said some blood was shed, you know what I mean? Some time was shed. And, you know, the, you know, I wasn't the first bald-headed black queen either. You know what I mean? I know for a fact that wasn't, you know, yeah. every city, every city had their black queen. You know what yes, I mean? Yes, so yes. Did Grace Jones or what it can be. So I'm not the first, you know what I mean? But right. I know those girls and those girls were fierce. They were amazing. So, you know, I, I, I grateful for all those girls that I, that I met with my young age and all, the, all those other like mom and pop bars and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I used to love going around and, and seeing the girls, seeing like, uh, uh, Miss, um, Miss Amazing Grace. Did you ever heard about her? Amazing Grace? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. She was like eight foot nine, girl. Did Grace Jones. But oh, she no. was Grace Jones, girl. She was Grace Jones. Flat top it all. She was amazing, you know. Oh, Miss wow. Toy, Miss Toy from Richmond or Victoria C. Snow from Richmond or the Christmas, the Snow family. And um, that, that was my favorite, my favorite family in Richmond. Mm -hmm. The Snow family. Christmas mm -hmm. and oh, I just love those girls. Feeling cunty, um, I read somewhere, it means for those who don't know, feeling incredibly snatched. Yeah. Be glamorous without, but without, without any of that, without you putting it on. It's like you embody that. Okay. Right. Am I cunty still? No, I don't think I am. I think you grew, you grow up out of, you grow up out of it, and I can still feel it. I feel wonderful in it, but I think it's something that is a useful, mm -hmm. gay. It's a rites of passage. It's mm -hmm. like for those that want that feeling, to feel that, feel that essence of that flavor, of that Pringle. You know what I mean? They want to be that. That girl, you know what I mean? That, that girl, girl, yes, that girl. That girl, G-U-R-L, you know what I mean? Girl, 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 girl. yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, it's, it, and that, and you know, you know, what I'm grateful for is that, you know, in my, where I grew up in Richmond and Richmond, there were always trans people there. I mean, I've always had black trans people around me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I thank God for that. You know what I mean? Because it yeah. was, it's like yeah. that, you know, was, you know, the, the butch girl or the, you know, the, the feminine guy, whatever. They were like, you know, they were like, they were girls. You know what I mean? They were, yeah. you know, they're always there. You know what I mean? It was genius. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, people act like it's something new and it's not that it's new. It's just that through some communities, I think we're able to take, especially the black community, you know, able to take our own and, and, and put our arms around them. You know what I mean? I want to just, I want to set the record straight. Filling Cunty preceded being snatched, right? Snatch was always there. Oh, snatch, snatch was, to be snatched was always there. To be snatched is always there. That's in your face. That's in your, that's in your body. That's in with your clothes. Snatch is always there. That Cunty is a new word that was put upon the kids. Okay. And nothing to do with any other word, you know? Being cunty was like a phase and stuff. So obviously you don't wake up, you don't, you don't feel cunty as you used to, you said. No, I don't feel, I don't feel like, cunty, I don't feel, I'm 54 years old, girl. I mean, cunty is a, you know, I feel, I feel, I, I, I can put it on. I feel cunty now. Um, I feel, right. you know, amazing, but it's just, it's not so 24 seven for me anymore. So, you know, and you, and you go through things in China, you go through things in life, you know what I mean? It, not to say I, 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 I am, I've grown my cuntiness, but it is a youthful thing for me, you know what I mean? I can still do it. I mean, when I used to perform that track, the track was 14 minutes long, girl. I can do a good four minutes now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I get, that song wears me out. It wears me thin, girl, that song. But, 
you know, back in the day when I was a kid, I just, you know, I did it for 14 minutes, you know, and it would be like, you know, very dramatic, you know, like, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I, could, I, would, I could do 14 minutes now. I could, I could do it. No problem. Uh -huh. But, you know, it'd be a lot, a lot of, <sighs> right, right, right. Well, Bette Midler had the like, you know, the oxygen tank afterwards. Yeah, yeah. What's a what's a typical day like for you? Um, and what are you what as what what are your days like? No, in the regular in in like in my regular life. Mm -hmm. like, um, I get up around that time, um, and I roll back and forth until I put on probably a movie or something to like get myself out. I have to I have the music or TV or something on, you know? Mm -hmm. I probably went to bed that way too, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, an, I'm a movie whore when it comes to the series and all these like Netflix and all that stuff. I love everything. So mm -hmm. I watch everything and um, mm -hmm. and I binge. Um, I guess this is the pandemic. It's just been very much like, you know, I'm searching for music because I'm DJing now and um, mm -hmm. I am I'm constantly practicing and stuff like that. that. And that's really beautiful. That's a beautiful thing for me because no one can control my music anymore. And that, and that, that, that was a big thing for me because someone always had to play my music for me. So now that I'm playing my own music, it, it feels very good. It feels so much like uh, in control. And, and I just got a new piece of furniture where I'm getting a new piece where I'm going to be doing um, the looping and everything. Mm -hmm. So that new piece of equipment that's going to make me loop my, my beats and stuff like that, loop my voice and everything while oh. I'm performing. So that's going to be really great because I can really like pull out some stops there. And okay, you know, this this whole thing with me, um, I, if I don't involve girl, I am not a dinosaur girl. I do not want to be waste away in this world, girl. I want to just every day, like be learning something new or just moving forward, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not gonna be this one person. I think uh, maybe I should uh, have regrets. No, go take the bull by the horns and fucking hold her, girl. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, that's yeah. my whole thing, you know? There's, there's so many people that are not able to do that, you know what I mean? And and I can do that. And, you know, I had my hips replaced because of heels. I've had my, you know, things happen in life. I was beaten, almost killed, you know? And so it's kind of like, you know, things, things, things have a way of like showing you how strong you really are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then if you're mm -hmm. so strong, then, then, then you can do what you need to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then I'd be the same way like I was before. And then, uh, you know, I came back to, to the scene, you know, pretty much broke, <laughs> you know, and, mm -hmm. and I went money and then I went through life and everything like that. And I just had a great time. I have no regrets, but um, yeah. going back on, getting back on this pole again has been fabulous. I live, I am in nowhere near, nowhere near as, you know, I love to say as poor as I, when I started back in the day. You know what I mean? I'm not like that girl, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but the decisions I make are much fiercer now. And I'm sure. <laughs> I, I, can, I can see it coming before it gets there, mm. which I couldn't see that before, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a kiki. I laugh constantly and I cry, but yeah. it's like, I'm so blessed. I really am. And, and you know, there, there's these naysayers people out there. Who's, oh, she's this, she's that. She's a legend. She's da 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 da. What is that all supposed to mean, girl? Really? Is it like a curse? You mean you're not gonna let me through again? What does all that really mean? I'm a legend. I'm iconic. I mean, no, I'm not finished yet, girl. So let oh. me continue to put content out. Let me continue just to be me because I'm still alive and I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I want to be 80 doing this, girl. Well, mm -hmm. nice to be, but, you know. But like any performer, I must allow myself to grow, to evolve. That's what I believe I have done with Entity. I've evolved. Yes, and Entity was a project that I really, really, now that I look at it, I didn't like it. <laughs> oh, you didn't? Yeah, yeah, because I, I feel like I signed my name to the devil, you know what I mean? And it was really like, um, yeah, it was really, because they had a lot of control of me and I did a lot of songs I didn't really go too crazy about because they had like writing credits and stuff. It was really rough for me girls in that album. And then they shelved me, you know, they shelved the album up two number ones. So, you know, I just, you know, and Gaga had not, she had just, Gaga was just come out, basically, or was coming out. And I remember them yelling and screaming over the cover of the album. And I wanted this beautiful yellow color we did. And they, and they didn't want it because it was too, too feminine or what it came from the cover. And they put this like other picture on the front and it's just kind of like black and white picture was not. Black and white picture was not 
was not, it wasn't represented well at all. And it's just kind of like, went, you know? <laughs> but then the, I have another album called Raw, a mixtape that I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I think get a little too stiff. Mm-hmm. In P Town, that 2015. Yes, that no, that track, that piece of work, bravo. That is Kevin Audience, girl. A to the D to the I A. Get it raw, honey. Get it raw. I, and for that, you received the Living you know Legend yeah. Award at the Living Legend Award at the Glam Awards. Yes. Well, that's when you yes, released the album. Yes. I and it was a collaboration I collaboration with producer M- M- Marana. Yeah. And it was a tribute to the underground sleaze scene. Yeah, so the, the sleaze scene is um okay, so the so the leather community, mm-hmm. they had their own music called sleaze. And it was very like tr- like very sexy, very, very, very like slow, very like you ever heard that song called um I um I uh, I need somebody to love tonight by um, Sylvester. I need some. I'm sure I have, but I can't, I can't, I okay. can't recall it. That's a sleaze record. Okay. So that, oh, that's okay. And um, beautiful record, beautiful record. Mm-hmm. Um, sleeve is like a cruising record. Okay. The, mm. Back in the day, they used to have cruising music, girl. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. So people used to talk to their music, you know, back in the day, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I know Ariana Grande, girl. So back in the day, we had all music, girl, you know? And um, it's funny how we had our own thing. We it's amazing how we all had it. We had our own thing going on so fiercely like that, you know. Mm-hmm. This goes and craziness and music. It's 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 amazing, amazing. You've also been in you've also been in films. Flawless was a movie that you were in in 1999. Right. That's also one of my favorite drag movies. I just recently watched it again. Yeah, I'm in the back of it. <laughs> we have a good scene. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. I did not know that you were in that movie either. What would you be doing if you were not a performer? Hairdresser. Maybe a hairdresser and probably... My mom, I was supposed to be a preacher, to be honest with you, but I just, girl, there's no way, you know. There's you no said way. a preacher? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I was just, yeah. I was just, you know, I sang in church and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. I just didn't believe, I just didn't believe people when it came to, when it, the music I believed in, I didn't believe the devil in the pulpit. That's what I did believe. The preacher really, really got on my nerves, girl. Mm. <laughs> all that stuff just got right now. now some of them i do believe that like my pastor was very fierce with me he taught me how to have a conversation with god okay you know, he didn't tell me what to do what I, he said you you come from good stock i am not going to try all i do is teach you how to communicate with god that's mm-hmm. all i could do mm-hmm. that's between you and god and, and, and that's fierce you know what i mean when when, when they say gays were not allowed and all this other bulls Bull hockey, bull, la la la, everything like that. It's mm-hmm. like I didn't never had that experience at the church. My church has oh. always been. My experience has always been like welcoming, come, come, praise. You know, mm. yeah, so they are music, all different. So through music, it was really, really fierce for me. I love gospel music. I love, love, love gospel music to this day. I live for it. Mm-hmm. I live, mm-hmm. I live for I live Shirley for Caesar. Them, you, know? you like Shirley Caesar? Huh? You like Shirley yeah, Caesar? Yeah, I like Shirley Caesar, but I like um, I like usually like Shirley Feeney and James Cleveland and oh, Chris okay, Cleveland. Uh-huh. you made my bed. I was in um, was Shirley Caesar. Shirley Caesar was fierce though. When she was younger, she was amazing. And um, Shirley, you ever heard of Shirley Feeney? No, Shirley not necessarily. Feeney. I wasn't raised up in the um church, and so I don't really really. I was raised up as a Jehovah's Witness, so that's a whole. Oh, other. okay, girl. That's another story, girl. A whole okay, other. No funerals, no nothing, girl. Okay. No, nothing, yes. nothing, nothing. No nothing, girl. It's okay. Sit in the corner. My aunt, my aunt was Jehovah's Witness. So. No celebrations whatsoever. Let's go to the Kingdom Hall, girl. Kingdom Hall. Girl. It's time for field service. Yeah. I want to. I'm going to read another quote. Okay. People all around the world deal with death every day, but after 9/11, that's when I really understood the song. It changed my outlook on life. Mm-hmm. Alive is about showing love to one another. It's uplifting, and with everything going on around the world today, we need that. Preach, yeah. And this was something that you said twenty some twenty years ago. Twenty years ago, really? Mm-hmm. You know, wasn't this after nine eleven? Yeah, it was just yeah. right there nine eleven, girl. I remember the club they was playing stuff at half mast. The, the morgue was across the street from the club at the Roxy. And they had to play the music they half night. We just released a song. He said, Kevin, go on and do a live set. We're like doing a live, you know, all that. Well, first, what are we doing in the club? There's nowhere to do. We couldn't go, we couldn't do anything. So of course we go to the club, you know, go to a safe space. And so I got up there, they turned the music up and, you know, 
And they, they had an acapella version, and I just did an acapella version, and then I did the other version, and then they brought it in, and it brought everybody's spirit up, and, you know. <laughs> If you believe in anything, you know that this that this vessel is just a vessel. You know what I mean? You know that this is just, this is temporary. You know what I mean? Your spirit and your soul, that's what is so important. You know what I mean? To be able to transcend and go on to other things. I mean, if you don't believe that, then, you know, why do you think there's a sun? That, that, I, think this, I think we go to the sun. People talk, people talk about the light and everything. I really think that the biggest ball of energy we have is that sun. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I feel like that sun, you know, we had sun gods and people worshiping and all of this stuff. I just really feel that sun is way more um, fiercer than what mm -hmm. she is than what we think she is. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's, a, there's a thing. You ever see those rays, rays of sun and things jumping off of it? and all that I think those are the spirits of their girl <laughs> you know in June of 2006 you were assaulted yeah. and um that was during pride month and the individuals were they were arrested and they were charged um convicted sentenced to some lengthy time mm -hmm. and they should be out now so they should be out now so. well yeah it has been about 15 14 years yeah. so yeah um, yeah I don't know who they are I never knew I never knew who they are I never got to meet them I never you know, hi, my name's Kevin. You know, um, yeah. So there's not much I can say about it. It's really, um, it's a, it's a, it's really a. Um, it just it brings. I, I talk sometimes. I can talk. This for some reason it's really hard today. Mm -hmm. um, Six days afterwards, you made an appearance at a rally protesting, and through a, a jaw clenched shut, you told the crowd. I told the crowd they couldn't keep a good queen down, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So spread love, love, love. We we show, show love or something like that. I can't remember exactly what I said, but it was really, really like, you know, an eye jerker, I'm just a tear jerker. You, you can't keep a good queen down. We can't fight any of these people with arms and drama. We have to fight these people with love. Yeah. Kevin just wants to say, you know, Kevin is here right now. Um, it's, it's hard to see we're in this crowd, um, but Kevin, we are truly sorry about what happened and we are here to show you the love and the support because I've known you for years. You're an incredible talent. You're an incredible person. And this is a crime. All these people are here for you and all that. What do you want to say to the, the city? To the city? I mean, you can say this is not going to pick up. Speak. These are the people right now to talk to. New York One, we got her. Speak ABC. up, Speak up. Yes, try that. Yes, do that. I'll hold it down for you. What's up, New York? What's up? Um, I did take my time, so, um, just, um, Thank you, everybody, for the love and the support. Um, the cards, the flowers. It has been, it's been kind of hard, but you know what? They can't keep a good queen down. I mean. Everybody, you must, you must realize something. We can't fight any of these people with, with arms and bats and, and, and the drama and all this stuff. We have to fight all these people with love every single day. Just watch out for each other and take care of each other, okay? Yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Woo! I, I, now I want to give a present to ignorance. Here comes the pregnant from Kevin to ignorance right now, people. Um, let's, where's the stage at? Did the stage come? Where's the stage? We have a little stage over here. Let's go over here, Kevin. Let's move it on to our little rinky dink stage. Well, you know what? There's Kevin to ignorance. Stop the violence. Stop the hate. Just love, love, love.
next few weeks and months, you got an outpouring of love and support from the community. A to the B to the I A N C E. Janet, yeah, Tyra, the, RuPaul. Yeah, they the girl, they were battling with those 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 floor arrangements though, girl. <laughs> were they? The, the floor arrangements were fierce. The fiercest one, they were like, they, they, I'm talking about odd, uh, like they, they, girl, like fierce. Janet was fierce. She was like some Japanese, like, like some something, some leaves on top of each other. But the, the one I loved the most was Tyra's because she had these little African violets. These little baby African violets all around. So this little, almost it was so beautiful. I was like, oh my God, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Really stunning, stunning, stunning. But the girls were battling. They were battling, honey. I remember it being in the media and the news. And I, I don't know you personally, but I know you're an artist and I know your music. You know, mm -hmm. all I could think of was that that was a very unfortunate situation. I can definitely understand what you went through because I went through um, a situation when I was 19 years old, but very happy that you survived. Yeah. And that you are still with us. And that's what people. That's what people don't understand. Like people did not survive this thing. It's like the guy, Michael Sandy, who died, who was attacked after me, died. I know. The one that got with the, with the Google, when with the with the grinder, grinder. Yeah. Just come out well, it wasn't grinder back then, was it? It was grinder. Yeah, it was grinder. Was it? it was was, was, no, that that had what to be Adam for Adam. Adam for Adam. Adam for Adam. Yeah, Adam for Adam. Grinder wasn't yeah. out yet. Yeah, so I don't know, they they coached that boy out there and they killed him. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like and two the two the two other guys they did die after me. So it's kind of like you know here I am being the spokesperson for the Henry Rice campaign. It was just hard. It was really hard, and I didn't really do the work yet to work on myself yet. So I mm -hmm. found myself on a major addiction. I found myself having to go to rehab and like not it was not cool. It was not cute, bro. I spent the next eight years trying to work on myself. Basically. Yeah, it's it's people people don't realize that after you know a traumatic situation happens to you like that, you may recover physically, and you may look. Girl, I had no idea. That I didn't really did. They had words for all that stuff. I just think you know, I was still you know working and doing working. I should was gone and taking a break and left. You know, and I didn't do that. And it was just like thank God I did that because I was killing myself on top of it. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really bad. Rough. But the good thing is that you did have support because some people, some people don't have support, yeah. a support system. Well, they can't, they can't talk about it at all. I just, when I heard all these stories about people being beaten and sliced and all this stuff, I said, why don't you say something? I said, who am I going to talk to about it? You know, big mm -hmm. muscle boys like this, but sliced up. Just, I know, it's just, it's yeah, I, I, I've been in the community for almost... 26, 27 years. I've heard so many stories, some regarding trans, some regarding, not many regarding lesbian, but you know, definitely gay men and trans. You gonna lesbian girl? Huh? You gonna mess with a lesbian girl? You said am I what? You gonna mess with a lesbian? Oh, oh no, 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 no. I <clears throat> I know, I know lesbians. I, I know them. I just I'm not used to I, I never hear Yeah. Tell me I, don't, I just don't hear recently. anything. Just that one girl recently that went to the park. You know that one girl recently she went to a park and she didn't she she didn't make it out of there. You remember that girl? Like this past year, mm -mm. she was that, that was something that was very really, that was strange for me. I was like, oh, how she get to? She was just walking to the park to go somewhere else and she didn't come out of the park. You know, she was killed. So. Oh wow. Okay. Clarence Patton. He's an executive director for the Anti Violence Project. I guess back then, around that time, somewhere around that time, you know who he is? Yes. Yeah. He said that we're more visible and warmer weather brings more people out on the streets. Yeah. And, exactly. I will, and I will say that now things are different The COVID happened, da, da, da. you know, I walk around drag da, 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 and, and uh, take trains, stuff like that. I just- A to the B to the I, A, N, C, E. I just, people are a lot more tolerable than they were, than they were before. You know, I, I didn't care before. I didn't care, I would do it before, but, they're, 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 they're less saying stuff now than the way they used to back in the day. You know what I mean? So they, there has been some change, you know, some, some acceptance there a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess I want to say because- Can't speak for everyone, can't speak for everyone, but- No, you definitely can't speak for everyone, but I mean, I lived in, I stayed in Brooklyn in 2001, 2002. I'm from LA. I, I would have just, just hair. I didn't have, you know, these and I was, I was still femme, but I, I had black boys throwing bottles at me. I didn't experience that in LA. I had, um, you know, I, I had a lot of, a lot of behavior things that happened in LA, but not to the point, but you know, obviously New York is different. You're, you you can pass yeah. thousands of people, you know, in a day and, you know, very close. And, you know, it's like just back then, back then, you know, this is 20 something years ago, the boys, when they would see gay boys or Queens, they would get very excited. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and so you, you and then you get excited, and then they're then they're their boys. They say, what you doing? What you doing? And they get embarrassed. <clears throat> Right, I, right. Yeah, I lost a couple of friends. That they, they, I lost a couple of friends to, because they like to mess with trade. We tell them stop messing with the trade, girl. Stop messing with trade because trade don't have guns. They got knives, okay? So the knives they get excited, they get they get cornered or something. They go stab you real fast, you know. What I mean, and that's how I lost a couple of my friends that way, you know. Well, yeah, the trade, the trade is this. The the trade is um. The trade don't play fair. No, they don't. They, they don't. just they 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 do not. They don't believe in playing fair and. What's the word called? Uh, enter at your own risk or play at your own yeah, risk? Play at your own risk, girl. Whatever. So, yeah. so it's like that, yeah. So one of the people that you remember most was Flawless Sabrina. Uh, she came in there. You know, she's, she's, oh, she's an older queen. And mm -hmm. she comes in and she just like brings me a, a, a little day, a, a daisy or a rose. She, sure did. she said, listen, I came here because I don't know what's going to happen with you. I don't know. And just, you did, your job, you've done a great job, girl. And someone just tell you that. And if anything happens, I told you that, and I'm telling you that now. We were very close, close after that. I miss her so much. Mm -hmm. I miss her so much. Were you a fan of um, the documentary, The Queen? Of course, honey. Uh huh. Yes, girl. I didn't realize that was her, though. I didn't realize at that time that was Paula Sabrina. Da, 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 da. I had no idea. And then when they told me, I was like, oh my God, you know? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, uh -huh. Yeah. Paula Sabrina. She was, she was. Wow, that was that was special, people. And I guess at some point after all of that, you had said that um, people were asking you when they would see you again, and you know, sashaying, and you said that it was time for Eric Sneed to grow up. Yeah, yeah, I had hey. to do a lot of growing up. I had to do a lot of um, a lot of growing up to do, and I had to have all myself to just be, you know what I mean, and just like mm -hmm. just be. 21 again you know what i mean because that's where i left off at 20 you know what i mean 20 is where i started doing drag so i had left that little boy that 20 year old kid there you know so that's what that was that's what, what i picked up at you know and mm -hmm. it was a lot of stuff i had to learn stuff i had to do and you know just to be comfortable with myself because i wasn't comfortable with kevin or eric you know at all uh, okay mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so you know i just i had put kevin on the back burner eric on the back burner and Mm -hmm. You know, not going back to get him. You know what I mean? So, because I had developed this person, this this thing, and um, to me, Kevin Avian's the the thing was perfect. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. you know, that's what you know, we the butterfly or the you know the swan. You know, and mm -hmm. then when you don't have that anymore, you know, and then you just left with yourself, and you forget you forget how you spoke, you forget how you thought, how you dressed, you forget everything. You know what I mean? Or how could you be hanging out with people, or how to be, how to even like. Judge, um, guide yourself to a romance, some romance or whatever it could be. You know what I mean? It's, it was really hard, really hard. And in 2015, too, girl, it was awful. It was awful. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's okay. In 2015, the Canadian filmmaker Raymond Helkio mm -hmm. he produced the documentary "Work Fierce Over yeah. Over Aviance." Work yeah. Work Fierce Over Aviance. Yes. And it premiered in 2018 at the New York um, City East Village Queer Film Festival. Yes. Yeah, it was really good. It was cute. Here in New York, tens of thousands of people braved this steady downpour and turned out for this year's Gay Pride Parade. No one has the manual to do what they do in their life. No one gives you the handbook. And when things happen that are, that are traumatic to you, you can overcome them. Um, you have to be open to overcome them. You know what I mean? Sooner or later, it's just going to be part of your story. It's not going to be the story anymore. And it does get better. Things do get better. I feel a little bit better to know that this is not my story. You know what I mean? This is this is a story, yeah. Something that happened to me, but this is not who Kevin Aviance is. That's 
consider a short documentary. Yeah, a short documentary. Yeah, it was and really you know, good. It was good. It's when I, flew, I moved back, just moved back to the city. And I was living in a flat to, on um, 38th Street, a uh, five floor walk. I was the only person living in the whole building. And um, yeah, because they, they moved everybody out. My friend had owned the, the apartment there, so he let me rent his apartment. So it was a five floor walk up, and I had them, and I had not had my surgery yet. So I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Aviance is the embodiment of Black queer resistance. Standing at over six feet tall, Aviance was listed as one of 100 most successful dance artists of all time by Billboard magazine in 2016. A remarkable accomplishment for a towering six foot out Black queer artist who gender fucked his place into both ballroom and dance music history. Kevin Aviance's legacy spans over three decades. In that time, he has shared the stage with music legends Mary J. Blige, Bette Midler, Little Kim, and share, all while taking sound of Black ballroom culture to the top of the dance charts. Kevin is an icon. There we go again with the icon, right? <laughs> Kevin is an icon. Kevin deserves all of the roses. A to the B to the I A N C E. Roses. Long before RuPaul's Drag Race imposed, Kevin was providing Black and Latinx children with possibility, hope, and sick Vogue beats to dance to as they built new worlds of their own. Kevin Aviance has been called many things, hardest working performer in New York club land, an artist who commands attention, an entity, a crowd pleaser, energetic and glamorous. One thing is for sure, as reported in Time Out New York, Kevin Aviance isn't your ordinary average every day. Kevin Aviance isn't your ordinary average every day. I guess it, I guess it ends with that. Kevin Aviance has five top 10 billboard hits under his belt, including last summer's post-millennial club anthem, Alive, pulsating hypnotic dance class classic, which climbed all the way to number one. He spent the year touring the world, spreading songs celebratory and life-affirming message to people living in crisis and civil unrest, including war-torn Israel. Obviously, this is some time ago. Yeah, 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 it was fierce, fierce though. December of 2016, Billboard magazine ranked you as the 93rd most successful dance artist of all time. Mm-hmm. That 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 was amazing when I finally saw that. I was like, wow. Like, you know, you don't think you're on the charts anymore, and then you are you still are you still on one of the charts, you know what I mean? So it's great, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. What's been the highlight of your career or one of the highlights? Meeting you. <laughs> Truly. Um Okay, all right, Queen. I, yeah, it's true. Hey I girl. Just, you know, I just, because yeah, I love meeting people. First of all, I love meeting people. I love meeting people that are trans or different, just, just like me. So, and you're black, it, it's like, we could talk all day. You know what I mean? So it's yes, like, yes, you know, it's family. Navigating and doing, yeah, it's family and it's cool and it's fierce. Um, we can have conversations, you know? We can um, have chicken. Yeah, down bull. And watermelon. If A down bull. Right. <laughs> have you had that watermelon and goat cheese, girl, yet? And who? Watermelon. Take the watermelon, fry the watermelon with goat cheese and put goat cheese, a slice of goat cheese on it and bite into it, girl. You will slap yourself silly, girl. Really? No, I've never had watermelon with any cheese. I don't fry think. Fry the watermelon. Mm -hmm. Fry it. Both sides. Goat cheese. Maybe arugula or some arugula on there. Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do the tartness with it. Right. Girl. Get mm. your life, girl. I, you know, I, I I like all kinds of flavors. So no, I live for flavors, girl. I live for it. Yeah, and I'm 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 it, it's in my schedule to buy watermelon. So I have to. <laughs> I might I might have to try that. I might have to try that. Um, in 2019, you participated in a panel for Worldwide Pride regarding the N NYC titled "State of Nightlife: LGBTQIA Past, Present, and Future." You had on a pair of fierce heels. Those heels were <laughs> those those heels were fierce. <laughs> and you guys talked about you know New York City nightlife and you know different things that affect the, the nightlife. There was a black right. lesbian right. who was a promoter, I think, and her girlfriend was in the audience. And her girlfriend was talking about how when she would try to book clubs with the gay men, they would turn her down because she was a woman. And then when she would try to, I guess, book clubs with some of the white lesbians, they would turn her down because she's a woman of color and you know they felt like she had a bad crowd or something right. and it was just interesting to hear you know to, to see that panel Didn't i read somebody though i read somebody at that panel girl did you yeah i read somebody at that panel they said something real fierce i was like that's i don't know who what where you do it you know you know I, no, no okay either it was towards the end and i didn't see it or the end. or they edited it out so i didn't see it um end. but you had mentioned you had mentioned um something about you know which black is in and which black is out? 
I think it's really strange because, um, you know, the, <laughs> there's all this other stuff going on besides just like, you know, the, 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 the blacks and the black Sheila and who loves the blacks and all that stuff. And, you know, black is in and all this stuff. And, you know, um, that black is in, this black's not in, and, um, and whatever. And at the same time, it's like when, when I guess we need to just start, you know, the gay community, LGBTQIABACC222, um, all of it, <laughs> um, you know, includes everyone. You know what I mean? And then I just think that whoever beheads, they're making all these labels and all that stuff. Just have to realize that you know, we are all the same. You know what I mean? We all we are one, and that's where I don't know when that's going to start or when that has to be or when it's going to be. I'm, you know, I don't know. Do you remember? Yeah, they well, they were they were they were dumbfounded with that whole thing. They 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 could believe what they they could not believe that I they thought I conjured, conjured up something. I said, "Girl, no, that's what goes on." I said, "You know, mm -hmm. there 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 are the times when you know that there are the times when um when you know they would let all the black girls in. You know what I mean? All the black girls at one time into a show. You had to be with your white counterparts. You know what I mean or whatever. And, and people don't understand that that's what really happened. You know what I mean? They think I'm just lying when it happened. I said, "No, girl." You know, I, I thought they, you were lying. They used to, they used to, yeah, the guys to joke that I was the Uncle Tom drag queen at the club. Um, you know, back in the, I remember back at the like Roxy days and stuff like that. Um, you couldn't go into Roxy if you were five black people, their friends, and walk into the nightclub. There's no way they would let you into the nightclub. I don't care what y'all say. What did you think? There was no way that would happen. You had to wait until somebody. Um, See a bunch of your friends, and you walk in, and you split your group up, and then you walk in together um, with the group. They would never let you walk into the club. So what would they say to you? Huh? What would they say? To you? Well, they didn't say nothing to me because I was hosting the night. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 all the time, but at the same time, the, my own community was calling me the Uncle Tom drag queen because I was working in all those white bars. You know what I mean? So it was like you know when when, when you're seeing that, when you're hearing this stuff in your own community about who you are and what you're doing, it's, it was just, it hurt a little bit. But at the same time, it's like, mm, whatever, I'll deal with it over it. No, 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 That's not jealousy. Deal with it. But um, I just, you know, I think that was my little joke I said, because I was the only black queen here that day. I remember one time they asked me, said, Kevin, can you get a little, can, can you get a little white dancers? They are white, they're just wearing dark makeup, honey. Okay. They, they asked you to do what? They get, could I get white girls to dance behind me? You know, like white queens? And I was uh -huh. like, yeah, they were white, girl. <laughs> oh, wow. They're just wearing darker makeup. They're wearing bronzer, girl. So, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know. if, 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 if so much shade, we could talk about it's it. No, it's, yeah, forever and ever, I'm in. And it's yeah, like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not, yeah. And I don't, I just, I just know that, I, I, well, I mean, it wasn't a funny comment, but, you know, you were just like, you know, which black is in and which black is out. <laughs> yeah. And no. you know, so many degrees. Sometimes that's still, yeah. I mean, before I did the Roxy, Shaquita did it. You know what I mean? It's just you know, she was the queen of the Roxy. She was the queen of the Roxy. Shaquita. Where's Shaquita at? Shaquita's at Hardware now. Yeah, she's still around. You, uh... oh, oh, Charles. I'm sorry. It's okay. You okay? Hi, y'all. You're fine. Welcome to Spain, girls. <laughs> so in 2019, um, your album, The Black Queen, was released. We did not release Black Queen yet. Oh, it hasn't been released yet? No, it hasn't been released yet, no. Because of the pandemic and stuff like that. Oh, OK. Uh, but a song has been, Mary yeah, the Lamb. Yeah, uh, Mary, Mary has been released, yes. OK, for so, okay so that's, when is it going to be released? What well, the songs are done. It's just about me getting it you know, out right now, which is like, I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to do it. It's done. It's done. It's done. It, it represents such a time in my life that I just like I feel I feel like it's kind of old, but I don't think it's old. It's just you know I'm just my own. I'm already on to the next project, girl. So you know that's that's, okay. that's that's the real that's the real key. So you but, said I just want to keep putting out my art and still do me and be Kevin Aviance. I don't know how to do anything else but be Kevin Aviance. Yeah. Now, with that being said, there's also a very uh. <laughs> A Kevin Aviance of old days and Kevin Aviance of new day. You know what I mean? So that's a, it's a big difference, you know, with that. And so I have to realize that these are new 
this is a new era, a new time. So I can't bring old ways to the functions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You hear people talking and not dictate and all that stuff. So it was yeah. a different time. You know what I mean? You have much more freedom, creative. No, I have much more patience. Oh, patience. I can hear people talking to me. I can have a conversation before I could care less about that before. I want oh. people to hear me and that was it. Oh. But that's what you had to do that to press through, though. I had to press through. I had to get through those doors. You know what I mean? So, you know, I didn't really, I took hostage. I didn't, so I didn't understand, no. You know, I had to be ferocious and fierce. And rah, you know, I couldn't mm -hmm. do it now because it wouldn't work. You know what I mean? We're, we're a cancel culture. You know what I mean? So I went to the Legends of Drag book launch event. Um, mm -hmm. It was in uh, the 14th Street, somewhere in that area. I saw that your name was mentioned in the book, but you weren't photographed for the book. And I was surprised. Yeah, um, I had done a lot of books already, mm -hmm. and I don't know why I was it in that book, but I'm glad I'm not in that book. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I'm not in that book. That book is like, that book is really, it freaks me out a little bit. So it's like, they, I don't feel that, I don't feel that, that legendary. Okay. I mean, I don't feel like, you know. I don't and, and it was focused more so on older, yeah, yeah, older queen, older queens. Right. I had interviewed her, Monica, and she was talking about, when you guys used to be at Escalita working together and stuff, but she had also, um, what was that like? Great, great. I mean, I had a party called um, uh, um, Pina, Pina, Col Col Pina Colada Sundays and mm -hmm. uh, I was traveling a lot. And she would come and she would rescue me, you know what I mean? So she had to you know, cover both nights, both events. And then eventually I, you know, the story is that I actually gave it, I gave it to her. I gave her the night. I said, I can't handle it anymore. There's no way. It's, I let, they asked me first, what did you just do? I said, let, let, her, let her Monica have it, you know? Uh -huh. she turns it out. She turns it out. She was turning it out. She, I had no idea how many people were going to her show. And, you know, it was. she's such a sweet person. It's wonderful. So I actually gave my thing to her. So it was fine. You know, it was totally fine. I, I, I had done what I could do with um, Pina, Pina Colada Sundays and that's it. You know what I mean? That was... That was it, you know. I, yeah, that was it. Yeah. I've I've never I've never um seen you. Well, yeah, I've never met you, and I've never I've never been at a place where you perform. So harmonica had said, mainstream drag culture. Uh, she mentioned the girls as being microwave queens. Yeah. Have you heard that term before? Yes, girl. I had never heard it before until she said it, and you know they become famous overnight. You know, I guess some would say that that's shade, but it's just the truth, right? Yes, it's true. You know, they pay by numbers, girl. <laughs> it's you the know, truth. Pay by numbers. They're, they're the same old, same old, same old. And, you know, yeah, they get a little, they can get the original, the original, you know, part of the originality still is in the Black community. I mean, the Black gay community, the Black queens and, and, mm -hmm. and the Black queens. I think that's the way the originality is still, still vibrant. You know what I mean? Um, uh-huh. I think that those girls are because you have to understand it's political. Drag is political for us. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not a cutesy thing, girl. It's a it's work, and it's work. It's work. It really is work. It's a political statement, and it's work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you know, black drag is is, is 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 political. You know what I mean? It's just is. You know, you have to come correct. You know, Drag Story Hour has been making national news, and trans are under attack. Are you surprised to see drag queens? Become targets of the so, of the right wing or so called um, patriots, Republicans. They better get ready. They better get ready. They think we just sit, sit down and not take take it lightly. No, you know they they. they please, it's just like it's just I don't. It's I can talk about this forever and ever. I should say, what is the big deal? What what is what is what are you so upset about? Yeah. <laughs> like what are they so upset about? What is the deal? People have been wearing dresses forever. Yeah. before they came along here you know so there's only form of entertainment in some cultures it was the man mm -hmm. in a dress you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i don't want to hear that you know like why are we so back ass words it's ridiculous you know? being a gay male used to come with a lot of shade some couldn't take the shade and have you know decided to leave and things have changed to a degree but being a queen often comes oftentimes comes with a lot of relentless shade how have you dealt with, uh, you know, messy people? Oh, I, I, I don't do it. I don't deal with it. I know that I am, like I said before, I sit on the shoulders of queens that have come before me that have paved the way, that have, that have allowed me to be 
a part of a part of a, I have a royalty that that no other person has. So I I, I feel very blessed for that, and I feel mm-hmm. like I am part of a of a moving, gagging, overness like piece of mechanism world that that I've been so lucky to be part of and now I'm churning it you know what I mean to make the butter and I'm doing part of that and my you know the things are coming out of from what I've done and that's where that's what it's about girl you know what I mean you um you know people talk about giving the roses before they've had I've got a lot of those roses already because I see the queens that come along after me and they're and and they know I know I know they know you know what I mean and they're fierce, you know. I just and I, I love them. I the ones I meet, I just met one this past weekend who was now Miss Miss Juneteenth. And I said, Girl, you have a responsibility, Miss Thing. Keep it cute. Mm. Press the button, get through those doors, let them know who you are. Mm. You know, she she was like, you know, she you know, she said, Oh yeah, of course we could. But at the end of the night, she was like this. I love you so much. Because da, 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 da. I said, I know, girl. I know, I know, I know. I know everything you're going through. I said, but you, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> everything's going to be good, girl. You know? I never stopped dreaming. I dream to this day. Mm-hmm. I just feel like that has kept my head in a beautiful space. Yes, dreaming. I open doors for others simply by being myself. Yeah. And sometimes that being myself can be wrong too, girl. It's not a perfect self. It's just like, you know, I can get on a rant. I can get on, <laughs> I can just keep being kind of fierce or whatever it be. But, you know, it's, it's, it's like, I like, I do like myself. So I like Kevin. So, you know, it's okay to like yourself, right? Are we frozen? No, I'm just looking at something. <laughs> girl, and that so, was fierce, and girl. There was a time when you did go through some difficult things regarding uh, mental health and emotions and, and, and drug addiction. How did you move forward with those, those, with those feelings? How do you, how did you, how do you? Right. The goal of doing something that is putting little stepping stones in front of me to, to, to know that to be better or to, to try to be, you know, I always said goals, I'm always a goal person, like goals, 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 goals. And to this day, so I just keep my head there, you know, and, and make sure that every little step I make is like something towards something, you know. Mm-hmm. The big box with a big old beautiful bow at the end of it, but it's all glitter. That's the box I want. You mentioned that you had to get outside of your head. Yeah. I yeah. can be room where I can be my own um, worst sinning. So, mm-hmm. you know? and that and that thing is where the drugs cannot, you know, they they permeate like this. You think you're fierce and they're amazing like that, but then you also get in your head, you know, get shady and all that shit, and start talking to yourself and all that stuff. That, that's not cute, bro. No, no that's not cute. <laughs> life, li- life is life is hard for for black people. Life is difficult for some LGBT people. There are a lot of people who are suffering in silence. What would you say to someone? Do, do you have any words of encouragement that you could say to someone if, you know, they were going read, through? Read, read, read something. Read, educate yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Stop, get out of your head. Um, go out there and meet some people. Talk to somebody older than you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's gay mm-hmm. or trans or whatever. I mean, older than you. They can tell you about something um, that you get to going, that's going to sparkle something in you that you can and, and volunteer. Do some volunteer work. And I'm going to talk about it in the gay community. Go to go do some volunteer work, whatever it is. Right. No, yeah, that has, yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. S- sexuality or gender specific. Yeah. 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 Just go and like give yourself. Go give it yourself. I say, I have a song called um, uh, I Believe, and it is in. And it's, it's a, one of the, one of the lyrics is a give yourself, you know, give yourself, you know, and, and, and in a way that you've never given before. That's that is that is definitely good advice. I always thought going up, growing up being black and gay was always a gift. Yes. Stand up for yourself, stand up for your people and be there for other gay people. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and the way they said that. So black and gay, da, 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 but be there for other gay people. So. And that includes everyone. Because I, would, I think of us as a huge race, you know what I mean? So, and then know that's wrong thinking, but you know, it's just the way I think. And um, you know, it's not so much about you know just the black black community or 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 the, the Armenian gay community or whatever. It's about the gay people. You know, we are a community. You know, as as someone who um, did survive a, a almost lethal assault myself when I was much younger, um, I've I've had to deal with a wide range of emotions. I've had my own mental health challenges over the decades as I got older and stuff. I just, I noticed just how much I noticed the, not noticed, but I understand and I realize the importance of emotional support. 
Whereas I don't think that if I would have experienced what I experienced, I wouldn't have had this understanding and I wouldn't have been aware of it. I told some people that everything that I've been through in my past and stuff has helped me um, be strong during the pandemic. You know, um, and be there for others. I lost my best friend during the pandemic and um, Ari Gold, Sir Ari Gold, and um, he had leukemia. Um, that was really, really hard for me, like really hard. Mm -hmm. And um, because he was, he was going, you know what I mean? And they were turning back and it was just like, it was happening and it happened. And I just felt so defeated, you know, and felt so lonely and so up just so didn't know how I was going to do like press on, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I woke up the next morning. <laughs> you said, and you woke up the next morning. And I woke up the next morning, you know what I mean? So no matter what happens, you're going to wake up, girl. You know what I mean? And yeah. you can either let it be the story or just, or just be part of the story. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. got to like do something, you know what I mean? It's like, you're still alive. You're still doing it. Yeah. And you know, He's not here anymore, but I know he's with me now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's right here with me. So, mm -hmm. you know. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar. I've heard his name. I've heard his name. And I remember when he passed, I remember, I remember hearing it, but I, I'm, I'm not too aware of who he is or, you know, his business, but I, I know his name has been in the community. Yes. Ours gold, my baby, my baby, my baby. I miss him so much. Yeah. Do you have any advice for the younger generation of LGBT kids and future drag queens? who attempt to be as cunty as you have so effortlessly and grateful, so effortlessly as you, as you have done. Let don't me re read do, that. Don't do anything like you said, that you saw the girl that came before you do it. Don't do it that way, bring it your way. Um, mm. Talk to someone older than you and listen, we have a thing about uh, looking good. Just look good, girl. just look good. Just look good? Just look good, look, look good. good and care, just care. Flawless, be, flawless. Yeah, not flawless, but you know, get to get to a place that you can be flawless. You know what I mean? Like yeah. work on, you know, that's the, 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 that's what we, that's what we, you know, that's our legacy. You know what I mean? Like bring it, bring it, bring it, always. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and you had just mentioned um, something about Miss Ju Juneteenth. You were at, for for Juneteenth. You were at Fire Islands, right? I know, I know, yes. Is that where Miss Juneteenth was? Yeah, so Miss Juneteenth was there in Fire Island, and she was the black and glittered up, and she was beautiful, beautiful guy. What was going on there? Well, you know, it was it was interesting. You know, I don't I don't really know the whole Juneteenth thing. I don't understand it that well, and so it was my first Juneteenth. You know, I didn't do the research first and all that stuff. You know, you get them, you know, the red drinks and, da, 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 and all that. I just, I just. I, I mean, you know, I, I I I'm from California. Mm -hmm. And my family originates from East, East Texas and Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I've always been, well, I wouldn't say always, but I've heard about Juneteenth, I would say over the past, maybe 10, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. I've heard about it occasionally. Right. And I, under, I understood that they were trying to make it a federal holiday. Right. I knew that it was a holiday in Texas, but I understood the origins of it, but, you know, based on um, right. it's the day the slaves were, were, free. were, were free in yeah. 1865. Right. Um, and I know everything, you know, happened in 2020 and, but now it's just like, all of a sudden this, this explosion of Juneteenth. I, I just, I just hope that this is not the government saying, okay, this is our answer to Black Lives Matter. You know what I mean? Like this is, we'll give you this. You know what I mean? I yeah. Just, like, yeah. I hope we can do all this stuff to have this go like, you know, shuck it to the side, girl, because this will be awful. You know what I mean? So I hope to God that, 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 that. It's something that they've been working on for a very long time. That's what they did. They you know, gave, you know, give a holiday and stuff like that. You know, but I just hope that that we, you know, they still work, you know, to make this place a better place for us. You know. Yeah. Def yes. And that that you just said that you know you you, <clears throat> you really weren't aware of it. So many people, I'm sure, they're just like, what what like, they don't know. If if, well, if you're not from the when south. I was, when I was finding out, they knew, and I felt like an idiot. So I was feeling like such an idiot. I was like. If you're not from the South or if your your family is not from the South and migrated somewhere else, you're not, I, I don't, I, growing up, I didn't hear people in my family, my black family talking about Juneteenth. Across the country, Americans are celebrating Juneteenth. The holiday is considered the longest running African-American holiday and has been called America's second Independence Day. 
It marks one year since President Joe Biden signed a bill calling it a federal holiday. So if you have the day off from work tomorrow, let's dig into the real reason why. It's a day with deep roots here in Texas. On June 19, 1865, federal soldiers rode into Galveston, Texas to free the last remaining slaves. This was more than two years after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. So on June 19th, all enslaved people finally became free. That's why Juneteenth is so significant, and that's why it's celebrated as well. I missed out on your event at Cruisers, and I'm disappointed. Well, I'm, you know what? I haven't went tomorrow night, though. And my birthday party, we're having a birthday party tomorrow night there, tomorrow night, so come out. Your birthday, you're in New York? Yes. So you back at Cruisers again? Yes. Okay, okay, the birthday party is tomorrow. Huh? Are you in New York? Are you coming? Yes, yes. Come on tomorrow, girl. 10 o'clock, girl. I'll be there. Okay, okay. Um, every future is built on a past. Join us for Legends Ball to celebrate people that paved the way for us to be here today featuring Kevin Aviance. This is going down in July in Black Pride. Yes, yeah, Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, yeah. Richmond, Virginia. It's the Legends Ball. We're born and raised, yes. A-N-C-E. H to the D to the I-A-N-C-E. H to the D to the I-A-N-C-E. Mm -hmm. Very excited about it. Going uh, home, you know? You're going home. Earlier you mentioned, <clears throat> you, you mentioned the Black the black Queen is, wait, is the Black Queen the Black Rose? Black, the Black Queen. The Black the Black Queen album is not, it's done, but it's not it's out it's yet. Done. Yeah, it's not out yet, no. You mentioned some, you mentioned some other things. Um, do you have any, any books, TV, film projects? Well, you know, I, did you see Wig? Wig no. on HBO? Where's that poster, this poster? Check out Wig on HBO. I have, a, I have one of the four queens that they talk about that, talk about on the, on the on this documentary that was done during the 50th, um, you know, the anniversary of our gay pride. That there was like three Stonewall. Years ago. Right, yeah. So um, so just check it out. This is, this is the poster. Um, see it? Oh, what, what is that? Wig is the poster. No, but like, what is the... My head. Oh, oh, it's a face. Oh, okay, it's an eyebrow. Okay, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Do you see it, girl? I see it. Yes, I see it. And 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 I'm going and I'm going to check it out. So hold on. I guess while I'm looking at it. So you said you had a Whitney Houston story. You want to tell it? Whitney Houston. We were, we were, she was on her last. We were in Milan. Me, Gerlina, at the time, Lena, uh, Gerlina, um, Shasta Cola, Candice Kane were flown to Milan to host the party for Whitney Houston's Dolce Gabbana. Um, they did all those for it. So we we're going to meet Whitney. So by the time we went to go meet Whitney, now I've seen the show 15 times before that, okay? And I was very annoying and I didn't feel like me young. So we got to meeting us. She, she introduced us to Whitney and she goes, that one? No. <laughs> Talk about me. No, what? Oh, hold on. Let me, plug, me let, me, let, me, let me plug my thing. Da, 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 da. What what do you mean? No, no what? He didn't. He went like this. Him? No. <laughs> Did he want to beat me, girl? girl, <laughs> girl. The shade, the shade of it all. No. I can't, girl. I cried like a baby. Oh wait, 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 wait! But she's in your um your bio that you. I know. We did other things together too. Yeah. She didn't want to beat me though. No, no. I know. I know. Oh, I, oh. I was with record label and Hoscarelli with her with her projects and da, 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 what mixes were good and what mixes were not good and da, 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 so it was like a lot, a lot of work. That 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 dance album she did, you know, with that with that microphone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 that was 1998 or 1999. Yeah, 1999. You worked on that. I would. There's a panel of people that work on the, you know, they had to, you know put the songs together or play played mixes for people. So I was one of those people that played mixes for. Listen to all the mixes, you know? Cause that's where they, 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 they debut all those mixes at my club. So I would have to go in and listen to all this music and say, I'm not doing that record. I'm not doing that record. I'm not doing that record. Nope, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know? What did you do during the pandemic? I worked on myself, DJing. I just worked on my, you know, worked on my little world. This is my mm -hmm. world over here, see? And how, oh, that isn't that colorful. How long has that, how long have you, how, when did, did you? I've only been doing it for like a year and a half. I'm, I'm booked, I'm gigging. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you, you're doing it. I'm gigging, girl, fiercely. Are you, are you, are you tomorrow? Yeah, girl. I'll do it now for you if you want me to. What you, oh, oh, great. Let's hear something. Okay, hold on. 
It'll be like really kind of muffled, but you can hear. This is a treat. Yes, darling. You know what? Let's do this put over here. You still see me? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So you're going to see the other side of my apartment. Oh, are you going to Harlem Pride or, or, um, no, I'm going, I'm going to be in San Francisco for Pride. Oh, you're, you're not going to be here this weekend? No, I'm being, yeah, I'm being in San Francisco. Oh, okay. I'm doing their Pride. Oh, okay. I can hear it a little bit. You going to turn it up, Kevin? Oh. How's that? I, I'll send you a tape, girl. <laughs> that's fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Kevin, thank you for joining me for Transbration, spending your time with me and today and celebrating your birthday. Um, appreciate you. Love your music. Thank, thank you. you so much. God bless you, baby. Okay. And I'll see you tomorrow night. I'm going to email yes. you that information right now. Okay. Okay, baby. Bye bye, sweetheart. Okay. Bye bye, Kevin. Bye bye. <laughs>